In the next month or so, we're going to add a, a support for Excel. We, we don't have plans to support the App Store. Um, Glide is going to be around for the long term. Um, our mission is to create a, a billion software developers by 2030. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to this channel. Today, we have with us David Siegel, who is the founder and CEO of Glide, which is a no-code tool that is mega popular. And check this out. The tool is for creating mobile web apps and it's very powerful, it's very quick to create apps. It connects itself to your Google Sheets and uses it as a database. And also very soon, it will also be able to connect to Excel that is hosted, of course, in the cloud. I've been asking David about Glide apps and mobile native applications and when Glide will have that feature. So make sure to watch the video to find out if at all they will have this feature. And also, Glide might be launching new products, new features, and yes, they will. So check out this video, you'll find out everything. And with that, get your coffee and have fun in this interview. Mm, one more thing, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button if you hear anything interesting in this video. And if you don't want to miss anything in the future about no code and tools and tips and tricks, then also make sure to hit the bell and hit all. And with that, now let's go into the interview. Cheers. All right, everyone. So today we're going to talk to David Siegel, who is the founder and CEO of Glide, which is a very popular no code app. And well, I'm using Glide a lot and I'm also hosting some uh, rooms on, on Twitter, like Spaces, but also on Clubhouse and people talk about Glide all the time. So I thought, hey, why not get the founder on this channel and talk to him about Glide, the future, and <laughs> what do you think about uh, the future of no code and how does this change the way we do things? So I'm very Such happy and honored that you came, <laughs> you came to this channel. Uh, I'm happy to be here. All right. So let me ask you the first question for people that might not know Glide as well as, as we do, right? Um, so what is Glide all about and why should we be excited? Um, Glide is, is all about letting people who don't know how to write code create amazing software. Uh, we want to make it easy and fun for anyone to create amazing software is just our, our vision of the company. And uh, it's not... It, that's just supposed to be very high level, very general. We want you just to break it down and to just emphasize things. Like when you make software, you should feel that it's easy to do and you should have fun doing it. And the result should be amazing. Um, that, that's, that's an extra special uh, challenge on top um, because you can make it so that people can make software, but usually it's not very amazing. Usually it's kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we just want we want you to have this great experience making great software. Okay, okay. So um, so what I see in Glide is very interesting because you're not creating any kind of software. You're creating mobile mobile apps, right? Mobile web apps to be specific. So my question uh, is because of course I've used it a lot and I have I can like grill you basically about a lot of stuff. But before I do that, because I would love to do that, I want to ask you about what is the difference between Bubble. Adalo and Glide, because many people use those and they want to understand for which yeah. use case I use which tool. Sure. Um, well, I'll start with that question. Like, why, why would you pick each one of those? There are really good reasons to pick one over the other. Um, Bubble is the most powerful. Uh, it's, I think, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. It has a, you can do workflows, um, very interesting logic and interactions. Um, so if you have a very complex use case and you want to build for the web, um, meaning, you know, desktop browsers uh, on laptops. Um, I think Bubble is, uh, is a still a, is a great choice for that. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit notorious for its steeper learning curve because it is so feature rich. And uh, Adalo is, uh, is, is more similar to Glide. It's kind of mobile focused. And I think you could pick Adalo if you, if you really want to go to the App Store. Mm -hmm. um, they have functionality for that. Um, Glide is a little bit of a marriage between those two. Uh, it's very powerful and it targets the web, uh, like, like bubble. Um, and it also has this mobile focus, or at least, uh, it's traditionally focused on mobile like Adalo. Um, but some of the benefits of Glide, uh, the most important one is our Google Sheets integration, mm -hmm. uh, and the integrations that we're going to add for other data sources that you care about. Um, so both in a bubble and Adalo, in bubble and Adalo, you use their internal source of data and they have integrations for connecting to other stuff as do all these tools. Um, but we made the strategic decision early on. We said, Google Sheets is very popular. People are familiar with it. It's a great way to collaborate on data and people already have their data there. So we're going to make this great sync experience between the, the apps you create in Glide and your data in Google Sheets. And uh, in the next month or so, we're going to add a, a support for Excel uh, hosted on yeah. Microsoft 365 cool. to expand that. Um, and uh, one of our most requested 
uh, data sources that we have working uh, in development is Airtable. And uh, basically, wherever you have data, we want to connect and let you build software on top of it. So we're much more about en enabling you to build with the data sources you already have. And we don't want you to sort of bring them into uh, Glide's universe uh, or keep them, keep them there. Right. Very interesting. And this just makes Glide really collaborative and it connects to these broader ecosystems of existing data, uh, data sources. Okay. Yeah. I really like that you, you put uh, a Glide in the middle because you're a web app and you're mobile, right? So you're exactly in the middle between those two. But... Here's the thing, right? a lot of people ask me, hey, can I build uh, mobile native apps with Glide? Because Glide is cool, okay, I have my app, but can I put it in the App Store? But kind of obvious question, right? But you cannot, yeah. right? So what are your plans in that regard? We, we don't have plans to support the App Store. Um, it's, uh, it's not the type of customer that Glide is focused on. Um, Glide is mostly uh, interested in people who don't want to go to the App Store because they're making apps that aren't appropriate for the App Store. Um, mm -hmm. We call these uh, apps for work or private apps. Um, most software in the world is not in the App Store. Uh, the App Store is this very small sliver of software that's public facing, open sign up, uh, and trying to get millions of users, for example. We're interested in the software for a business that has 50 employees or 500 customers, and they want to create something very specific and custom for their use case. Mm -hmm. And not we, we are actually not interested in the entrepreneur who thinks they have an idea for a better Twitter or Instagram. Um, Bubble is interested in, in users who want to build the next Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you want to build something with a billion users, um, Glide is not going to, uh, we're not focused on that yet. Maybe we'll get there, but we're more interested in these sort of high value niche custom specialized apps that aren't for broad distribution in public. Right. Uh, we're more interested in, in private. private okay. Use. Now I understand your pricing because I wanted to ask you, because I checked your pricing and it kind of tells you a lot of good story about what the target customer will be, because I obviously care about something you called private sign-in, which means that only people that I allow to sign in, right, could sign in, which be, which would be like an internal app, and, yeah. you know, you can protect this thing. And that starts $40 a month, right, plus $2 for each user. Now, if I have a lot of users, like a lot of users, then that would be ultra expensive. But now you kind of clarified why that is the case, because you are actually targeting more like internal company, um, internal company apps that maybe help productivity, help discovery, right. right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, a company paying $2 per employee for some custom piece of software that they didn't have to spend $100,000 to build is a steal. Right, right. But if you're an entrepreneur and you have no money to spend on your project and you want 10,000 people in a private community to talk about no code, that's $20,000 a month on Glide. <laughs> um, so that's probably not something you're going to pay for. We do have volume pricing. If you have a lot of users, you can talk to us and we'll make it work. Um, but no, we're, if you're, if you have this cool idea for a new private community and there's no business plan, um, that's not the tool that we're trying to help you. All with. right. So now that we have basically clarified what Glide, where Glide is positioned also from yeah. the uh, point of view of what kind of technology you can create, right? Because you're basically going to create mobile web technology right with it you're going to export that also the pricing is clear what kind of apps do people create well i'll also just note that we we want to change our pricing we we it's kind of it's kind of confusing now it's our only our second design of our pricing system um we had our initial pricing and then we have this public private pricing and we want to do something that's more all you can eat create as many apps as you want uh, with a, a clear way to think about right. it. Um, and we're working on that for next okay, year. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and what kind of direction will that go? What do you want to improve on? Um, well, we just want it to be easier to understand. Okay. And and right now our pricing is for each app, you have to decide whether or not to upgrade it. All oh, right, like I see what you, you mean. Down. So now you want to have, okay, you want I you see. just to make as many as you want. Um, but uh, if you have a lot of no-code listeners, a lot of them will, will say like, David, why don't you guys make a plan that's seventy dollars a month and I can have unlimited? We're not going to do that. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> because unlimited is is potentially very large. Yeah, it's um, harmful for and, you guys. Uh, our business you have to move. host it and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a lot of people don't realize is like software is not free um, to run or even to build. Right. Um, and uh, so, if if you make an app with tens of thousands of users, like that could cost a thousand dollars per day, like the, the costs grow. Facebook and Twitter, if you want to create the next Twitter, um, it's very expensive to run Twitter. It's not free. Right. Um, so 
uh, our pricing model has to sort of scale with use. So that's what we're absolutely. Trying to do. Actually, uh, we're trying start, to startup advice, right? Because this is not just for no code. It's actually for startups, right? That are starting something and no code is super helpful. Okay, uh, for that, right? Because you prototype. But startup advice, uh, wrapping up with uh, David just said. Um, I mean, you have to keep in mind that whenever you create any pricing and you make something unlimited or you make something lifetime or whatever, God knows, something bad like this, then you have to pay the price for the data center because they will charge you anyway, okay? So then you're screwed, right? Because you can't yeah. change. You already told the guys that they get it for free for or very cheap forever. No good, right? So yeah. don't do that. Um, so I totally appreciate that. But um, what kind of apps do people create with client? Okay, so yeah, they're web apps. Uh, they're for businesses. Cool. So give me some ideas. What can I create? Um, well, a really exciting example, uh, just two weeks ago was PGA's Ryder Cup, and they're one of our enterprise customers. This is a huge uh, international golf tournament mm -hmm. in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, and it was USA versus EU. And they made Glide apps to scan people in and out, uh, scan their badges as they come and go from the grandstands, um, and uh, to, to, to count the number of people entering the different parts of the tournament to make sure that they were not over capacity, mm -hmm. and to run their lost and found. Um, so this is an example of a business. They have what we call a field ops use case, which is what we kind of specialize in with our mobile, our mobile focus. Um, so they have employees in, in the field, uh, out of the office, on their feet, on iPads and mobile devices, using sensors uh, like location and timestamps and uh, taking pictures and doing scans. That's a very popular uh, use of Glide. And if you go, if you take a look on our website, we have all these templates of the common use cases. And one of our template galleries is called Apps for Work. And that's where you can find uh, the most common business uses of Glide, sort of inventory tracking, personnel, HR, uh, delivery is a very big one. Tracking deliveries, giving truck drivers, iPads and mobile phones running Glide. Um, uh, Glide kind of makes your the spreadsheet you're already using in the business um, more open to updating by more people in a highly controlled way. So if you have like a thousand delivery drivers in your food delivery business, for example, you can't really share a Google sheet with all 1000 of them and say, hey, every time you make a delivery, can you just <laughs> check off this no. row? It's gonna be messy, yeah. you know, they're, they're outside and they're gonna make mistakes and someone's gonna delete the whole thing by accident. Right. But with Glide, you can just make a Glide app right on top of that and share it with 10,000 people. And all they'll see is the checkbox and all they can press is the checkbox and it's highly controlled uh, and it's not brittle. Right. So that, that's the kind of patterns that we see. Yeah. I mean, with 10,000 people, I think the pricing will be painful, but you're right. Of course. Uh, yeah, that would be. So that's the, basically the idea of, of protecting the Google sheet or the Excel that you're going to have in future, right? Um, protecting it from people messing it up, right? Putting a user interface on top of it, um, yeah. which is glad in this case. Okay. That's very interesting. And of course, I mean, I will show on the screen I here. Mean, that's, that's at a high level. That's what software is. Software is a user interface, usually on top of a database. Usually, yeah. And you could just not build software and you can tell your users to update the database. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to break it and it's not very Exactly. Pretty. There is no validation and everything going to go, yeah, pretty much south. Um, right. So uh, what I want to know next, like, okay, so you're saying you, you don't want to focus on the native app aspects. Okay, cool. But what's what's on your roadmap? Yeah. Okay, where where is this whole thing going? So before you answer, right, let me tell you, Tiny story. I have a few friends that use Glide and they are mostly, funny enough, actually they are financial advisors, you know, people helping other people with finance. And well, they use a lot of Google yeah. Sheet there, right? So, and then they created apps on top of Glide. And I asked them before we started this interview, I said, hey, I have David with me. What shall I ask him? And they had some crazy questions, which they're going to all come here. But they also said that if client goes down the drain for whatever reason, would not happen, then their business will be in jeopardy because they already built the, basically the basis of their business on top of client being financial people using sheets a lot, putting yeah. the app on top of that, right? Which is really important. So you guys became very important for these people's lives. So what is on your roadmap? Yeah. Those people want to understand, will you be around? Do you have funding rounds? Do you, you know what I'm saying? Do you, have, you know, what are your plans, right? Because they are, they are building their business on top of you yeah. guys. Um, well, first of all, Thank you for to your friends for building your business on top of Glide. Uh, yeah, we, we've we've seen this quite a bit. I've seen a financial firm with like a hundred apps where they make one app per client. And uh, you know, if you're managing wealth for people, you know, twenty, thirty dollars a month, or even two dollars a month for one of those clients is again, it's uh, like a rounding error. That's not a significant cost whatsoever, especially if your financial advisors can like customize the app on a per customer basis, which which Glide lets you do. That's that's a superpower that 
no one has even had before. Um, but yes, Glide is going to be around for the long term. Um, our mission is to create a, a billion software developers by 2030, uh, which presupposes we'll be operating until 2030. Um, yeah, I would say, uh, yeah, Gl Glide's doing great. We have many customers. We have a real business and uh, we're not a, a ephemeral startup that's going to disappear. All right. So, so, are you so, right. so are you planning any kind of... Um getting any kind of funding, right? In order to finance some bigger plans that you have. And, you know, also what are those bigger plans? <laughs> um, yeah, like, like any startup, um, we, uh, we consider how to fund our business and we have a lot of great options, uh, especially uh, in today's fundraising environment. Um, but I, I have no concrete plans that I feel right. in are worth sharing. All right. All right. And so the, the, the product glide, okay. So in what direction will it go in the future? Right? So, okay. You have a lot of cool features. You kind of mentioned before you have QR code scanning, right? Cause you said that that's the use case. Um, you have, I'm not yeah. sure. Do you have GPS location or something like that? Yeah. Right. So you can build, so that's cool, right? You yeah. can build apps. Up, you know, that's, it opens up a lot of use cases. Um, so what are you planning for the future, uh, uh, for the product, right? What kind of new features are you having in the pipeline? Well, a major one is uh, actually a whole new product, not in addition to Glide apps, but uh, our next generation product called Glide Pages went into beta this morning at 8 a.m. Pacific. Okay. Um, so it's available now. If you just go to Glide, you can create a new. When you click new, you used to always create an app and it would ask you which data source. But now when you click new, you'll choose app or page or mobile app or web page. Right. And the language is a little bit tricky. Because by web page, we mean something quite powerful with search and data updates and actions, all of the powers of a Glide app. Um, but uh, it's oriented towards uh, the browser and the desktop because we learned from our customers that they always pair a Glide app with some sort of desktop interface, whether it's a stretched out Glide app on a tablet uh, on your laptop or some sort of admin interface or editing the spreadsheet itself. There's always a, a component on a traditional PC, uh, like laptop or desktop. So Glide Pages is just a, is a new version of Glide that targets uh, that design environment, that, that form factor. Very nice. So, hey, you just so announced uh, a new product. Major, Very nice. Major new area. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, it's not launched yet, so keep it quiet. But we invite everyone to try it and give us feedback on our forum. Um, but we're going to make a lot more noise about it in the fall, later in okay, the fall. Okay. And, and, and how is it different from like stretching a, an existing Glide app to a desktop kind of experience? Can you, yeah. what is the difference? Yeah. So all of the fundamental building blocks, the components that you build your Glide page out of have been designed for large screens. They're fully responsive. So for example, the, the main, the main, um, the most important component that we think people will use today and glide and glide apps, it's usually called an inline list, but we have a new one for glide pages called the collection, which can make this big wide grid of images and actions. And it's responsive when you resize and it takes advantage of a large screen. And another special thing about glide pages is because it's keyboard and mouse, there's a very high data, uh, ac or action density. So you can have one card that has a menu with five actions in it and you click on them, they do different things and you program them separately. So I think that, you know, your, your typical glide page will have three to five to 10 times more actions because it's, it's less about consuming or recording what you do on a mobile device. And it's more about administering, updating and doing a lot more work. Interesting. Um, so glide pages will specialize. They're more powerful. Right. So, Hey, listen, after this interview, I would jump on it and test it. Okay. Cause I didn't even know that that exists, Great. but can I imagine it? Like I can have multiple, like of those elements next to each other because I have more space, right? I can arrange them uh, in a grid in general right i can put like a map here and a form there and like a picture here and so on and then um i have some kind of no no okay no no so Damn. um <laughs> we that that's another big difference between like glide and bubble for example or even adalo um adalo and bubble have general and webflow too they have these sort of general two-dimensional mm -hmm. layouts uh layout systems which are pretty good for people who know how to design uh but 90% of people don't know how to design their app. They just want to do it quickly and have it look really great. Um, so Glide is siding with the 90%, not the 10%. Um, and we, we still manage more of the design process, but we are interested. Well, first of all, Glide pages do show more data at once. They're more data dense. Um, we have a component called, I think it's called buttons or button bar. And you can put like six buttons next to each other, which makes sense on a, on a big screen. But on a mobile phone, six buttons in a row is of not course, great. Yeah. Um, but we will, over time make Glide's uh, layout system 
the 2D layout system more powerful. Um, but not yet. Um, but there is one exciting new concept in Glide Pages, which is a container. So you can make a container with child elements and you can apply like a visibility condition to the entire mm. container or a styling to the entire container. So we're starting to add some more power to layout system. But no, you can't say, I want a map here and a button here. And then on top of the map, I want a picture. You yeah, no, yet. I was not expecting that much flexibility, but just a grid and I can drop yeah. uh, uh, in just into the grid so they can be next to each other. Because I thought, I don't know, you have more space. But it doesn't matter, right? It's a beta. Yeah. I, I love to test it. I'm already looking forward. Let's finish the interview. I can test it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so I have a few more questions, yeah. right? So... We feel like if you if you have that feedback, leave it to us after you try pages on the forum because we have some mockups of how to do sort of a multi-column thing where you can put stuff side by side. It's not in the beta, but maybe it could make it for launch. We have some ideas about how that could maybe, work. Maybe, yeah, who knows? But yeah, first I have to check it out in order to give any feedback that makes sense. But um, I'm very excited about it. So yeah. thank you for announcing it. Um, and well, this video will go live. People will check it out, right? Oops. Uh, so make sure your servers yeah, can great. scale. You can just remember, you can just type glide.new in your browser and you'll you'll be able to create a new app or page very nice i love it all right so i also want to talk to you about the overall no code space do you see yourself as a no code app or do you do you even like this classification and you know how will no code evolve over time and yeah. change the way we do things um yeah glide is definitely a no code app um and uh for some reason that i haven't figured out I don't like I don't like this no code phrase, or I don't like the conversations that or the questions that people like to tend to talk about in no code, like no code versus low code, and should you code? I love programming. I have a degree in computer programming. It's like one of my great joys in life is writing code, and it's part of the inspiration for making Glide. It's like the style of thinking that you do when you write code, and what it, and the things that it lets you create are so special. Uh, I wanted to give more people access to that. So I really prefer to like have a positive view of what coding means and how it can be shared and to spread the, the at least the feelings uh, that you get when you, when you do coding. So um, I'm not crazy about calling Glide no code. I think, uh, I think learning to code is a great idea. It's a superpower. Um, it's just shouldn't be required to make like an app for your HR team right? <laughs> or like for a financial advisor to give their clients some beautiful portal where they can, they can see uh, information about their portfolio that shouldn't require reinventing the wheel every time, which is still how software development. Feels. Yeah, I agree. I mean, on your website, I mean, on your start page, because that's what I was checking the word, no code comes up only once. Right. So that's why I was asking. It's not like, you know, all over the place. Some tools really want to yeah. classify themselves like this. I tend to agree with you. I'm also a tech person. Actually, I'm a tech person, right? I can't code. Um, I just think that, you know, most people can't code and they will never, right? They will never learn to code. It's too much hassle and they yeah. have other things to do, right? So I, I see the same way as you do that um, they shouldn't be required um, to develop. And also uh, this, this digital space that we have created with the internet is growing very fast, right? And especially in the recent years. And uh, most people still can't create for the web, right? They can only consume, mostly consume, right? And I think that's, uh, it's a pity, right? Because there are many great ideas yeah. out there. I mean, I've, I have interviews with people on the channel that have created incredible stuff as, as uh, doctors, for example, right? Their own application for classifying p patients. And wow, crazy, right? Like go and create that with code. It yeah. will take you a lot of, a lot of money, right? But also a lot of explanation about, Hey, I want this like that, and this should work like this, right? You have to give this knowledge that you already have as a specialist. You have to give it to some developer so that that person can then create your app. What I really like about the no code tools or the, the tools that don't require you, the point and click basically, is that you don't have to, to hand over the knowledge to other people so they can finally create what you need in order, you know, you can just do it yourself. And I think that makes yeah. the process much faster. And also, Writing code is probably the easiest and best part of making traditional software. There, there are all these other things you have to do when you make software. For example, shipping your code to the servers mm -hmm. that serve it on the internet. That's often called deployment. That's not writing code, but it's this arcane and <laughs> kind of not very exciting necessary step to take the code from the laptop where the developer makes it and put it on an internet server and make sure it stays online. As we saw Everyone learned a painful lesson about how servers can go offline, even when you have armies of professional coders. I'm referring to Facebook. Right. Um, 
that wasn't really a code error, but it was had something to do with like routers and configuration and stuff that you shouldn't have to really be concerned with if you're just trying to make software for your business. So um, yeah, I love code, but I like you know no deployment, no version control, no security, and by no security. We're trying to make LightApps the most secure software uh, that you could build, but we sh you shouldn't have to be a security expert to make secure software for your financial services business, for example. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Do you actually still find yourself coding yeah. anything or it's over? Oh, yeah. Um, especially since we have an experimental feature called Code Columns in Glide, where you can make a custom computed column in the data editor that uses code. Mm. Um, and I've been having a lot of fun with that. Is I that like one that, the, um, like Excel can, or like Google Sheets with the equals and then formulas or even more? Anything. So I've implemented a column that runs Lisp. Oh. I've re implemented a column that runs Excel formulas and one that runs JavaScript. Wow. And one that runs JQ, which is a sort of data processing query language. Um, so to make some really powerful columns that developers might be more interested in. So the more advanced Glide mm. users. None of these things are required to use Glide. It's kind of the sort of frontier that we're exploring of how you could extend Glide. With Very code. nice, actually. Um, nice. But the key thing is like you, you make one of these code columns and then you can share it with people who don't know how it's made. They just paste the name in and they get the functionality. So, oh, okay. So it's like a marketplace for those kind of things then in your app? It, it will be eventually. Um, you, can, you can kind of see them on your own. If you go to column.sh, mm -hmm is the little development server that oh. we've set up to work on these and you can play with them. Nice. Um, yeah, you can open it right now if you like, <laughs> column.sh. Right. Okay, cool. Wow. And uh, these are all the ones I've made. And um, they generate, there's ones that generate QR codes. Um, there's one that generates uh, branded artwork that is compatible with Glide's new brand so we can make avatars and stuff. I see. Very nice. Okay, wow, cool. Yeah. I really love that you do these experiments. So how, well, do you work with users, with existing users when you work on these features and ask their feedback before adding it actually to the, to the product? What's your process there? Well, there's a huge range of processes for different features. I mean, there, there's a feature that a, an enterprise customer might ask us for, and then there's a feature that we might dream up as being sort of a far future idea. Um, and, um, yeah, so a big range. This this experimental code column feature, it's even in the product. It's called experimental. You have to click a button. I understand this is an experiment whenever you use it. It's heavily guarded as experimental. Um, and in that case, that was um, that came out of one of our fun cycle projects. Every six months, uh, everyone gets to work on the thing that they think is most fun instead of the business agenda. And um, my co-founder uh, and CTO, Mark, made these code columns. They were originally called yes code column because yes code is kind of our jokey. The opposite of no code is yes code. Um, so <laughs> he made this yes code column and I said, I don't want too many jokes in our product interface. So let's call it experimental code, even though I like yes code. Um, there's even the hell yes code I see column, that which takes right now. Further. I will show it on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yes code. Um, let's Glide actually send JavaScript code into the column to get evaluated and then come out. It's, it's quite wild. Yeah, no, that's really nice. I think uh, I do have some friends that are developers and use Glide as well, and they would love that stuff. And also anybody who helps yeah. out anyone who uses Glide and they have some, they want to solve some complex issue, right? And so like, you know, I, I can imagine in a company that HR, marketing, uh, admin, right? They have some ideas, they, they, they come very far, right, with Glide, but then let's say they get stuck for something. Then they get a developer and the developer finds out that you can do this kind of stuff. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, smart move. Smart yeah. move. We want to, we want to make sure that Glide has a, a great story for the developers in your company who want to integrate Glide in a special way with their systems and extend its capabilities in ways that we at centralized Glide could never have expected uh, ahead of time. Right. Um, that, we want to have a really strong story there. Um, speaking about story, uh, one of my questions is, um, do you have like the craziest story where a customer used Glide to do something that you have never expected? Um, yeah, I, I, unfortunately, I think I've told these stories a couple of times, but maybe on, on podcasts that no one no one's seen. But um, I think Glide was a month old and a sheriff in the county that I actually live in now, at the time I lived in the next county over, but a sheriff in, that was an hour away from where I lived, um, who was non-technical, heard about Glide on Flipboard from like a TechCrunch announcement, and he made an emergency app with resources for this big storm that was coming to the county. 
and they shared it on Facebook and like 40,000 people got the app and got road closures and all the alerts and he would keep it updated. And so he couldn't code. He learned about it. And in one day he made this app and then two days later, 40,000 people used it. There's like, um, wow. Leapfrogging how software works today. It's not getting someone who can't code to have the exact same abilities and, and power as someone who can. It was like a quantum leap in what was going on. And that was like, Oh wow. Like we have an opportunity to make something much better than how software works. Not just, raise everyone to the level of a software developer. Right. So that was amazing. And then, um, yeah, I did that one. That was like the, the first major eye opening thing where we were like, Oh my, Whoa, like that, that's some powerful stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was uh, great for your employees for you guys, right? Very motivational. Okay. So are you guys, um, hiring, you searching for talent for your business? Yeah, always. Uh, if you go to glideapps.com slash jobs, uh, you'll find the, the roles that we have open right now. So why, what are you searching for roughly? We especially need, I'll just plug this one. We need a, a contractor right now to help with our build system. So if any of the more technical people who, who watch this, if you love making uh, Webpack and React and web applications build much better, uh, we're, we're having a little bit of a headache <laughs> <laughs> uh, on our development team. We can use your help. Yeah, perfect. Very nice. A uh, good shout out, I think. Uh, right. I think GlideApps is a, a, a Glide, uh, actually. It's a, it's, a great, uh, it's a great tool. Uh, it seems to be a very fun company the way, at least the, the way you uh, picture it. So, hey, might make sense to apply. All right. So um, having said that, I think uh, that uh, we're reaching uh, kind of the end of the interview. And what are your final words you want to leave the audience with? Oh, my final words. <laughs> um, yeah, well, like I said, we have a, a new product in beta, Glide Pages. And I would love for people to type glide.new into your browser <laughs> and you'll, you'll be able to create a new thing in Glide. And uh, it used to be just apps, but now it's things. Now you can create many different types of things. Um, and try Glide Pages and visit our community forum and give us your feedback and tell us how we can make it better um, so we can really really make something spectacular uh, to launch at the end of this year. Cheers, man. Having said all of that, I do have a few more videos that you should be checking out. For example, this video here, that is one of my early videos about how to create a spending tracking application with Glide. And here, this interview that I had with Emmanuel, the founder and CEO of Bubble, which is the most popular no-code tool. And with all of this good stuff, I see you in the next video.